What was your reaction to what went down Monday night in Atlanta, Georgia with Fannie Willis? We have no constitution any any longer that guides the conduct of our elected officials. And Fannie Willis was is like a third grader on a playground with a loaded gun. And she believes she's shooting those that she disagrees with or are her political enemies. And she's blowing a hole right through the Bill of Rights and our Constitution. It is frightening, terrifying, and strikes at the very heart of what a free people and a government that respects their liberty is supposed to do. You know, I've often said, John, um, on this program and elsewhere, that no nation with people who are unwilling to protect the freedom of those with whom they disagree will remain free. And that's what we're seeing. We're seeing Fannie Willis, who dislikes her political opponents, unwilling to be guided by basic guardrails as it relates to the exercise of her power, we see a media, legacy media, that is more interested in hurting those that they dislike rather than being guided by truth and core American principles, piling on, failing to engage in any critical analysis of what is happening in this country, and thereby putting us in great jeopardy going forward. We, unfortunately, maybe America is getting what it wants. You know, we these charges, and, and, and let me look at them for a second. I'm just reading from the indictment. Act two of this conspiracy for which all of these people can spend the rest of their life in prison was holding a news conference and making claimed false statements. Act six is Mark Meadows asking for the phone number of the Speaker of the House of Pennsylvania. Asking for the phone number is part of the act of this conspiracy. When you read this indictment, which is, I don't know, 90 some odd pages long, every bit of it is about speaking and having contacts with other government officials. None of it involves a threat. None of it involves intimidation. None of it involves people acting together to commit violence or threaten violence. Not a single thing. These are people who are disagreeing about information and evidence that is critical for us to discuss as a nation. And they're making it a crime. I think Alan Dershowitz got it right. He said, when I represented Al Gore in 2000, the conversations we had would be crimes under this interpretation of the law by, by Jack Smith and his charges, and now Fannie Willis in Georgia and also Dana Nessel in Michigan against the electors. This is outrageous. These are people who are saying government has the jurisdiction to determine what speech is true and what is not true and will punish those who say things that are not true. This is the government that wants jurisdiction over the truth, the government that denied COVID origins, the government that lied about gain of function research, the DOJ that lied about targeting parents, the DOJ that lied about targeting Catholics, um, the DOJ that lied about Trump-Russian collusion, the DOJ that lied and covered up Hunter Biden. I could go on and on. That, uh, that group are the people that the American people apparently, because they dislike Trump and don't like his language or his behavior, are willing to give jurisdiction over truth. Let me tell you, if you believe government's role is to prevent you from being offended by the speech of others, eventually it's going to determine that your speech is offensive anytime you challenge it. This is amazing that within a century, after seeing the fall of the Berlin Wall, after witnessing what the oppression and tyranny of government does. In a time when governments are engaged in genocide, the Chinese Communist Party, which silences speech within that nation, also enga is engaged in horrific acts of, of harvesting organs of people who are alive, of, of doing this social metric with the surveillance, limited capitalism that they have that doesn't allow people to get jobs if they speak against the government. That, that arrest people without any type of rights and they disappear into the Chinese communist system. And we see the fruits 
of this type of thinking and America is going this direction because of the Trump uh, uh, hatred, the, the, the Trump deranged sy syndrome that these, these people on the left have. They are willing to toss away American exceptionalism and our written constitution to gain this political objective. That's what we're seeing. And it will destroy this country unless we speak out. And, and, and that includes those who don't like Trump, those who would vote against Trump. You, you could sit here and you could question the judgment, but to make these things a crime. So that's unfortunately where America is today. It's been that way. It's been moving that direction for some time. As you know, John, um, I had judicial ethics weaponized against me because I had information that they didn't want people to know about. Uh, this has been a tactic, but America generally has withstood and, and fought against this on the national scale. And I'm worried that they're not. Our, our news media is, is, is terrible right now. They ought to be uniformly condemning this. And, and they're talking about speech. Look, this, this is not limited. This philosophy is not limited to silencing Trump. Um, it will silence journalists. It will justify raids of, of newspaper offices and things along those lines. Um, it's a remarkable time we live in. 